Have you ever wondered how some people manage to become extremely wealthy while others struggle to make ends meet? I don't know about you, but for years, I always wondered, is there some type of secret that the wealthy and the rich know that I don't know and that's what I'm missing out on? Well, in today's video, that's exactly what we're talking about. 10 things that the rich and wealthy do that poor people don't. And if you make it to the end of the video, I think you'll be in a place where you can understand more how the wealthy and rich make so much money and how to get yourself to a place where you're in financial success and not feeling like you're in financial distress. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Joseph and my wife is Stephanie and each and every week we put out videos talking about money, investing, and building wealth. So if that's your cup of tea, stick around, make sure you subscribe, and if you like this video by the end, make sure you give it a thumbs up. So number one, the rich believe that earning income through the value they provide in the marketplace is way more important than the value they provide with their time. So what exactly does that mean? I didn't know what that meant whenever I first started working. I believed that I was getting paid a fair wage based on the hours that I was working, but the rich and the wealthy believe that they should get paid in direct proportion to the value that they bring to the marketplace. Essentially what that means is let's say they're part of a company and in that company they help build a product that so many people across the world decide that they want to use and or have to have in their life. Well then they get paid based on every one of those products not necessarily on the hours it took to build that product. Let me give you an example that might hit home for a lot of you. Let's say for example there's somebody that wants to mow your lawn. They're going to get paid you know 40 or 50 dollars to mow your lawn where somebody else created the lawnmower and there's a ton of people who need that. The person who is mowing your lawn. Maybe you have your own lawnmower in your garage your grandma, your grandpa, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, they all need lawnmower. So that person who created the lawnmower or a certain part of the lawnmower gets paid in direct proportion to the value that they brought to the market, not by the hours that the lawnmower is actually getting paid. So how is this different for poor people? Poor people essentially believe that they should be getting paid based on the number of hours that they put into that specific activity that they're doing or that specific work that they're doing. Look, I think that we all believe that hard work is a part of success, but at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about the output that you're putting out that is going to make you rich or wealthy. It's about the value that you bring to the market. And I think oftentimes poor people miss out on this because they don't realize how much value they could be bringing to the market. And they're more focused and solely focused on the number of hours they're working and getting paid for those hours. So if you want to change your mindset on this, the thing that you should focus on is not necessarily how many inputs, the number of hours that you're putting in, but the actual output. How many people can I put in place in my business to be able to create more hours in a day in order for me to make more money without me working as hard? Number two is the rich believe in reading and reading every single day. Tell me if you've ever heard this saying, the more you learn, the more you earn. The wealthy believe in this to their core because they believe that the leaders in the world are also the readers of the world. So one of the wealthiest people in the world named Warren Buffett was asked, what is your key to success? And he simply pointed to a stack of books and said, if you can read 500 pages a day like I do, there is no way that you can't be successful. Now I'm paraphrasing that, but essentially that's what he's saying. Now the reason he believes in that is because it's like compound interest. The more information that you can take in and also take action on, it's like compound interest. It builds and builds over over time. And the more that you can build your knowledge and take action on that knowledge, the more chances you have to be more successful. Now, the interesting thing about books is we can find books online for really cheap these days. We can find books in our local libraries for free, but most of us just choose not to do it. And that's keeping us from learning more information about personal finance, investing, building wealth, and also personal development. And if you can't go out and just take those simple steps, you might miss out on some great opportunities to become rich or wealthy. Number three, the rich focus on the opportunities that are available to them and not the obstacles that might be in their way. Let me give you a real life example of this. Whenever I was younger and starting in my entrepreneurial journey, I used to run into roadblocks all the time thinking things like, oh, I don't want to go into that industry or into that niche because if I do, it's saturated. There's so many people in it. Two, three, four, five years down the road, I'd run into somebody else who started at the same time that I did. And guess what? There are millions and millions of dollars in their bank account because they said, you know what? That's not an obstacle for me. I'm going to overcome that obstacle. I see that as an opportunity because I can learn from somebody else who's doing much greater than I am, do something that is similar to them maybe even improve on it and make just as much money, if not more money. So the main difference here is the poor often see obstacles where the rich see opportunity. They are willing to go into markets, into niches that others aren't. And because of that, they become the ones who prosper. Number four, the rich surround themselves with positive and really successful people. You may have heard this before. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And the rich know this. And because of this, they spend their time with other people who are really successful and or higher levels in them so they can learn from them and become more successful. I think that's a big part of my success because once I started learning about money, building wealth, building businesses, I started focusing on putting myself and surrounding myself with people who were way more successful than I was to learn from them, to be mentored by them, and then implement the things that they were doing. Because I knew that if I could surround myself with a great circle, then I would have a better opportunity to become a millionaire and become way more successful. So the main difference here between rich people and poor people, poor people are not willing to put themselves in a place where they may seem a little bit lower status than somebody else and be in that same room with that person because they don't want to feel inferior. However, most rich people say, hey, I want to 
be around this person because I don't mind being the dumbest person in the room if this room has an average earning of $5 million per year. Oftentimes we'll see that poor people will surround themselves by bad influences, essentially squandering any chances they have of becoming more successful or earning more money. Number five, the rich are willing to promote themselves in order to show that they have more value to the marketplace. What I hope you learn as you start studying more rich people and more wealthy people and reading more books on personal finance is that you'll find that rich people or wealthy people have some type of skill that has helped them build their wealth. And because of that, they're not afraid to share their strengths with other people. What you'll often find is whenever somebody becomes wealthy and they actually care about other people is they'll actually use their time and their platforms to share that information to help other people grow as well. Now, as for poor people, they don't have any particular skill that stands out or is an extraordinary skill, which is perfectly fine. But with that becomes the earning potential they have, which becomes a very mediocre earning potential as well. Now, the other interesting thing about sharing your skills is poor people aren't willing to share their skills because they might feel like somebody else will take their ideas and or mock them for the skills that they have. However, if they took the time to really sit back and say, actually, I do bring a lot of skill set to the market and a lot of value to the market, they could potentially earn a lot more money and improve their financial situation. So if there's anything you take away from this is make sure you figure out a way to sell yourself because the better you can do that, the better chances you have of adding value to the market and making more money. Number six, the rich learn how to grow bigger than their actual problems. You see, the rich see problems as opportunities where the poor see problems as obstacles. What often happens when somebody's starting out in business and or they get employed is they let obstacles become a hindrance to what they're trying to accomplish. Instead of trying to problem solve and get through that, they go ahead and say, you know what, that's way too hard. I'm going to take a step back. And then they just kind of go back to the status quo that they had previously. Now, on the other hand, rich people thrive on challenges. They know that if they can solve more problems, there's an opportunity for them to be able to make more money because people want problems solved. And if you can solve those problems, they're willing to pay for it, especially if it saves them time and saves them money. So if you can learn to save people time and save people money and not shy away from solving problems, I guarantee that you're going to have a better opportunity of finding financial success. Number seven, the rich think both while the poor think either or. So there's this important term called opportunity cost. And essentially what it means is if you decide to buy one thing, you might be giving up on buying something else. So let's say you're employed right now and you want to go out and start a side hustle or another company. So this is how a poor person would think. They would think, I have to quit this job in order to start this company because I can't do both. It's not possible. There's no way that I can focus on both of these things, earn my income through my company and also start this other company. Now, don't get me wrong. I think this sounds logical. You're like, hey, I don't want to lose my job because I'm focusing on something on the side. But the rich think a lot differently. They figure out how they can have both. So let me give you an exact example of how the rich would do this. They would say, you know what? I earn this money right now from my nine to five job, whatever that income is, and it's doing well. It's paying my bills. It's covering a few extra things. But I want both of these things. I want to get this money from this job, and I want to figure out a way to get out of this job because I may not love it and or I just want to earn extra income. So what they say is, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to work this job. It pays my bills. It's my nine to five, but I'm either going to get up earlier in the morning to work on my passion project or my side hustle or stay up later than everybody else in order to work on that project until it makes me more money than my job and or just covers the bills that I want to cover or gives me extra income for the things that I want to have. So if you want something you've never had, you've got to do things that you've never done. So you have to have a both mindset and not an either or mindset in order to become the rich and or the wealthy person you might want to be. Number eight, the rich and wealthy focus on their net worth, not their working income. So poor people often think in terms of hourly pay, whereas the rich say to themselves, you know what, I think it's more important for me to have a higher net worth than to be concerned with how much I make per hour. Now, don't get me wrong, I think people can make a lot of money working hourly jobs and get paid a lot hourly. But if they can't keep that money in their pockets, in their bank account or in their investments, then they'll ultimately become broke. Basically, a rich and wealthy person knows that if they can keep more money in their pocket in their investments and in their bank accounts, then ultimately what's going to happen is it's going to create more opportunities for them to build more and make more in the long run. Although I believe it's important to make as much money as you possibly can, whether it's an hourly job and or a nine to five job that you get paid every single month, you want to make sure that you also keep as much money as possible and don't allow that money to escape you. You want to make sure that you keep that money in order to build a rich and wealthy life down the road. Number nine, the rich are money smart and specifically dollar smart. So there's this phrase, I think it's an older phrase, but maybe you've heard it from your grandmother or grandfather or somebody in your family, essentially saying a penny smart, a dollar stupid. Now this is practiced by a lot of poor people without them even realizing it. They focus on the pennies that they're spending, the coffee that they're spending money on, and they're not 
so focused on the larger amounts of money, the things that they should be spending money on, like self-improvement investing. So this is where this term comes in, where it's like, okay, I'm focused on my pennies, but I'm not focused on my dollars. Now, the difference here for rich people is they're focused on both of these strategies and making them work for them. They focus on how am I spending the little bit of money that I'm spending, you know, on my coffees and different things like that. And then they're also focused on their larger amounts of money. How can I invest that money? How can I make better decisions, get mentorships, be around smarter people and become much more intelligent on how I want to see my financial future grow by investing in these things. Number 10, the rich network and they volunteer as much as possible. Now, I think this one is really important because once you start understanding money and how it works, you'll start understanding it's about who you know, not what you know. You'll also start understanding that your connections are super valuable. The more connections that you can make with wealthy people that you want to surround yourself with, the better opportunity you have to make connections that are going to drive you to be more successful or through these connections, you're going to have better job opportunities and or investment opportunities. Now, meeting new people in the space that you want to be in or the levels that you want to get to only has upside because the more connections you make, the more possibility that you give yourself to be successful. So if you are somebody who is working your nine to five right now, give yourself as many opportunities as you can to go out and meet people at the levels that you want to be at. Because if you can do that, I think you're going to set yourself up for more success because people will see you volunteering. They see that you're taking your time out of your day and or your weekend and they'll say, hey, you know what? I really like this young person. I like this person in general, whatever age you are. I want to give you an opportunity. I want to meet with you. I want to have coffee with you. I want to tell you about my life. I want to tell you about my business. And all of a sudden you're starting to sit in rooms and places with people that are at the levels that you want to be at financially. So don't be that poor person who goes to work, works your nine to five, comes home after grinding the day and saying, you know what, that's enough for me. This is my mediocre life. Unless that's the life you want, then please, by all means, go ahead and do that. Because if you're happy with that, I think that's fantastic. But I can tell you, it's been proven the more that you can network with the right people, the more opportunities you have to become financially free and to become financially successful at levels that you can't even imagine. So if you're somebody who's striving for financial freedom or financial success, go back and watch this video again, take notes, write them down, read them over and over and start employing these because I think you're going to put yourself on a really good path if you do. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, don't forget to give yourself permission to be wealthy.